and yo. Hello, so you guys asked for it, so we're doing it. We're gonna be making a corset body today. In my previous video, I showed you guys a garment that I made a while ago that kind of condensed and uh, hid all of the bulkiness from a shirt that I was wearing under a dress for Wednesday Adams. That garment is called a corset body and it just kind of streamlines everything, but it also is a support garment. So before we get started, I wanted to get a couple of things out of the way. The title was a little bit clickbaity saying like, make your cosplays better. I do want to just say that I don't mean that in a way like you have to corset yourself down or make your body smaller in order to be a good cosplayer that is just absolutely not true you can be a good cosplayer however you want or you can just be a cosplayer you don't have to be good at it either to have fun uh, be whatever cosplayer you want to be so today's video is sponsored by skillshare you guys know that i love skillshare i have worked with them a couple of times now i signed up for skillshare before i was even doing youtube consistently i think one of the first classes i ever watched on there was about making your own t-shirt fashion line which i thought was absolutely fascinating. There's so much on Skillshare that you can learn and it's a really great online learning community that has thousands of classes for you to just explore and try out and it can help you grow your creativity and learn a lot of new skills. The class that I wanted to talk about today is a class on sewing basics. Because today's video topic is a little bit more on the advanced side of sewing, I thought that to help you guys get to that point if you are not quite there yet, this class would really help you out. Sewing Basics Make Your Own Clothing is a Skillshare original class by Denise Barron, a designer and pattern maker. So it takes you through two hours of a bunch of different types of seams as well as finishing such as bindings and facings. And the final thing that you learn is shopping for fabric, which is a very important part of learning to sew and also one of the most fun parts of learning to sew. This class is a lot of fun and will really help build the foundation that you need to get to the point where you can make your own corset body if you are on the more beginner side of learning how to sew. If you are already on the advanced side, it's always good to have some refreshers too. So I think this class can be really useful for everybody. If you're interested in trying Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial. So back to the corset body discussion. Similarly to historical undergarments, a corset body will really influence how your outer garments look on your body. If you spend a lot of time on costuming YouTube, you know that if you want to get a specific era's silhouette, you wear that era's undergarment. So if you want to look Victorian, you wear the Victorian corset and a big cage crinoline. Or if you want a Regency look, you wear a pair of Regency stays and a narrower Regency petticoat. So the corset body has a lot of different functions. If you recall Kim Kardashian's look from the Met Gala, I don't remember what year it was, but it was her wet look dress where she had a really cinched in corseted waist. This is how they achieved that. So they had her in a boned undergarment and then built the wet look dress over top of it so they didn't have to put the foundation or structure into the wet look dress. It was already in the undergarment that she was wearing. That's kind of the first of a corset body's functions is that it does conform your body to a specific shape. So if you're looking to get waist reduction or with my corset body, I kind of lower my waist so that my torso looks a little bit longer. It helps you conform your body to a different shape if that is what you're looking to do. The rest of the functions are a lot more practical in nature rather than just aesthetic in nature. So the next function of a corset body is to serve as the structure of your garments. Because I wear a corset body under a couple of my costumes, I don't have to put bone into each of those costumes. You wear like a tube top or a strapless garment. You kind of have to pull it up throughout the wear so that it doesn't like wardrobe malfunction you. The corset body makes it so that you can attach flipper bones to your garments and a flipper bone is just a short bone that goes into the neckline of a garment and I will show that later at the end of the video. But you can tuck those flipper bones into the neckline of the corset body and that'll hold everything up so you don't have to worry about strapless garments sliding down your body. The next function is a little bit more similar to the conforming your body function. It is less about waist reduction or making your body a different shape or whatever like in the moment but it does make it so that your garments can be worn for a longer time so as i've talked about in the past uh, my body does fluctuate a lot during the month just through hormonal cycles i know that i can get more wear out of my costumes because they will still fit the same with the corset body no matter what my body does the last function of the corset body is that it prevents 
your costumes from having as much wear and tear because it is the thing that is taking all the tension from your body. So if you wanted to make a tight garment and it was just on your body, then that garment would be taking tension at the seams. The outer garment is typically the thing that people will see, right? So <laughs> that's what gets all the beading and embellishment. That garment is a lot more complicated to recreate, to fix, than a corset body would be. Personally, it takes me about a day or a day and a half to make, and that's from cutting to completion. So it's a pretty quick make, whereas my outer garments took me months for some of them. So I would much rather have to completely remake my corset body because it's maybe taking a lot of strain than have to even just make an alteration on some of those outer garments. And I will show you the costumes that I use my corset body for at the end of the video as well, so stay tuned for that. So with all of that, I do want to just again reiterate using a corset body like helps you with your cosplay not just because it like makes you skinnier or whatever like you don't actually have to build that function into it but it does help with the convenience of getting dressed you know that you're not gonna <laughs> have a wardrobe malfunction it helps with not having to build a structure into every single garment that you make and it really helps with like the longevity of your costumes whether that is because you can still fit into them the same way or because it puts less tension on those outer decorative garments. And lastly in this video, I am only gonna be covering the construction of the corset body. The patterning is something that would need to be an entirely separate video, so that will come in the future. I'm gonna go over how you pattern and fit this kind of garment, but for this video, we're just gonna start from cutting the fabric and go through the construction. This is not a full tutorial, but I try to give you all my like tips and tricks that I think are important. So with that, let's go look at the tools and materials you're gonna need. You're going to need some kind of fabric, obviously, um, but I usually like to use cotille, twill, or for this I'm using a cotton canvas because I have some leftover from a different corset project. Pull on this, it's got little to no give in either direction. You're also gonna need basic stuff like thread needles, sewing machine, scissors, marking things, you know, all that. You want a really big hefty zipper, so none of those coil zippers, you want it to have teeth and a plastic zipper is better than a metal zipper for this because it won't get caught. Uh, you're already going to have some trouble pulling it up over the waist if you're doing any waist reduction. So you want something that's going to be very hefty, that's not going to split on you. You want it to go from the top of the corset body on your back all the way down to the fullest part of your hips or butt so that you don't have any trouble getting it on and off. You'll also need boning. I like to use the German plastic boning because it's very flat and it's lightweight and it's easy to use. You don't need boning tips or boning fluid, anything like that. You can just cut this with some tin snips and then file down the sharp edges to make them more rounded. Also is like the most lightweight option. This is meant to mimic uh, whalebone. It's synthetic whalebone. And there's two types. There's one that's a little narrower and a little thicker like in profile. This one is the wider stuff that's a little bit flatter. I like it for this because we're trying to go for as little bulk as possible because we're using this to kind of like streamline the silhouette. You want it to have the least amount of bulk. So I'm also going to be doing this with one layer of fabric. We're going to be making the boning channels out of this uh, twill. It's not twill tape. It's called Prussian tape. It's a lot thinner than normal twill tape normal twill tape i guess it's i don't know it's not that much thinner but it doesn't have any give like normal twill tape does and it just feels thinner uh, i don't know um i just prefer it but i think you can use regular twill tape as well need elastic this is not actually necessary i'm going to use a one inch elastic at the waist so that I can hook the waist together and then zip myself up, or Micah can zip me up, to get that elastic hook together. I've got a skirt eye and hook. It's a little bit different than a normal hook and eye. If you have a hook and eye, then like that's fine too. I just prefer these for this application because they're a little bit flatter than the normal hook and eye. I do also have a normal hook and eye for the very top of the bodysuit, so that'll hook the zipper together so the zipper doesn't slide down at all. Cotton satin ribbon for binding the top. This is not necessary either. You could do a uh, bias tape if you really want to. It's better to use something that is straight of grain rather than bias. So like bias tape will stretch because that's what bias tape does. It kind of stretches and conforms to the shape, but this will not do that. So it prevents the top edge 
from stretching out like even in the parts that will go through bias so that part that travels to the bias will not stretch out if i've got a straight up grain ribbon it also gives a really nice clean edge without the extra bulk of like folded over pieces so it just folds once rather than folding and having four layers i will have all of these supplies linked in the description so you guys can check it out and make your own and yeah i think that's all the supplies if i missed anything i'll list it in the description and i'll let you know as the time comes this is my pattern. I drafted this ages and ages ago. Can find various uh, like bunny suit patterns online. There's like the duct tape way to make it. There's, I think RNA Black has a free bunny suit pattern. So you can use any of those. My body has changed a little bit since I made this, since I made this in 2018, but this will fit my costumes that I currently have made. So I'm just gonna kind of like force myself into this shape. It should fit fairly well and it'll develop a little bit give as time goes on. So this will be fine. the center back pieces first so I can stick the zipper in there. It's a lot easier to do zippers if they're flat rather than trying to do them when the garment is like a cylinder. Before I put the bonding channels on this, I did remember that this scoops down a lot more than my pattern does. I am just gonna make sure I do that to this as well since this will be my replacement for this one. I'm gonna make sure that this neckline matches so that I can still wear it under the original dress. My needle broke as I was stitching over the zipper to make it so it doesn't like go past that point. So instead I'm just gonna do it by hand and I'm just gonna whip stitch by hand a couple times over the zipper to make a zipper stop. To do the seam allowance boning channels, I want everything to be as flat as possible. So first off, you want to press everything really good and make sure that the seam is very flat. And then we're going to cover it with some Prussian tape. Prussian tape is going to do the job of both being a boning channel and also covering up these raw edges. So we're going to trim this down to half the width, a little bit under half the width of the Prussian tape. And then I'm just going to stitch the Prussian tape right over top of this seam allowance.
wanted to go over a couple of the details that I did that I kind of glossed over earlier. At the end of each boning channel, I did two to three stitches just perpendicular to the direction of the boning channel. So that will give me lots of places for the bone to hit up against. So if it cuts through this line of stitching, it still has one to two more uh, lines of stitching to keep that bone in place. I did this because I had a problem with my last corset body where it was like starting to poke out of the boning channel. So like here where I didn't do that stitching, I was just relying on the stitching from the binding to keep that bone in and it, it doesn't. It just pops right out because this stuff frays. So I just wanted to make sure I had an extra safety measure to keep everything all in there and make sure that it was secure. I did that before I did the binding, so I made sure those were really good and secure before I did the binding, and then I did the binding after that. Where it dips down in the center front, I stitched this on by hand, just like hand-basted it, before I put it through the machine, because that was another problem I had with the last one. I didn't get it quite onto the fabric. It was kind of at the edge of the fabric. It does pull away there, so I just wanted to make sure that that was really secure this time. And that's it. Let's go try this on. Oh, this is what it looks like when it is complete and on my body. I do need help getting into it. Uh, I can usually get it up to about here and then the last little bit of it uh, around like the top of my rib cage needs a little bit of assistance from Micah so that I can like squish it together while he pulls it up. <laughs> Definitely having the elastic around the waist helps a lot. You can see my underwear underneath it because I'm not wearing the right cut for this, but whatever. I'm also wearing dance tights. If you're not wearing tights, it's just gonna ride up really far and it's not comfortable and it doesn't really do what it's supposed to because the tension like around like the underside of your body, I guess, is part of what keeps it in the right place and helps it be really stable. So when you're wearing this, you want some kind of really firm tight. So I recommend dance tights. I use Capizio tights, and these are also useful if you're making this more as a bunny suit rather than as an undergarment. Those dance tights don't have like the control top. They are just kind of control top all the way through the leg. So they are very like, they're tights. They're very tension high tights but they don't have that separation kind of like at the top of the thigh that most normal tights do. This reduces my waist about two to three inches. So without the corset body, my waist is about 26 to 27 inches depending on various factors. Right now I'm on my period, so I'm probably a little closer to 27 inches. This reduces me down to 24 inches. I did cut the pattern to be 23 inches, so this does have some give to it. And it's just kind of inevitable that like, unless you're using really high quality cotille, that your fabric is gonna have a little bit of give. Plus the 23 inches is kind of the inside measurement. So if I were to measure like the inside of this garment, it would probably be closer to 23 inches, but because I'm measuring the outside and there's that layer of fabric and the layer of boning in between like my skin and the tape measure, I'm measuring closer to 24 inches. So that is about a three inch waist reduction. You can do more or less than that depending on what you're going for. I made this for anime costumes, so I was looking for that waist reduction. This also looks very dramatic on me because I have pretty wide hips. So just like my bone structure, this is, this is bone. <laughs> so my hips will never like be less than this. So it makes the hip spring like pretty dramatic when I get any waist reduction. I was also pretty careful that when I did the top edge of the binding tape, I pulled it pretty taut around the bust curve. So that helps with like lifting everything up because it's putting tension at the top edge of the curve. Whereas when I did the tape at the bottom, I was careful not to pull at all because I wanted all of that extra movement and space. This is not uncomfortable. It's like obviously not as comfortable as like a t-shirt and sweatpants, but as far as like corsets or constricting garments go, this is a pretty comfortable one. Like I can sit, I can move, I can like do things. And it's a little bit tight, obviously, but it's not uncomfortable at all. So basically this just provides a really good foundation then to build on my other clothes. Let me do a little bit of a comparison. You can see what a couple of my outfits look like before I put the body the corset body on and after I put the corset body on. So this was the original outfit that sparked all the interest in the corset body and like how it's made, where I got it, all that kind of stuff. Well, I got it by me making it, so there's that question answered. But this has a pretty blocky like square blouse under it, so it's not like the most flattering. This is the before with the shirt underneath. This is what the shirt looks like tucked into the corset body. Cute look. 
looks like a fake character. I can't remember what the character is, but kind of looks like it. Um, so I'm going to stick the dress on, but I wanted to show you guys that like the boxiness of the shirt is completely contained by the corset body. Are you the whiniest girl? Yeah? You the... Oh, are you okay? <laughs> You're fine. Okay. Good. Do you know how much I love you? Yeah, you do? That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like with the corset body over the shirt and under the dress. Like it it very much like helps to streamline the whole thing. It makes it look a little bit less clunky like in the midsection area and like it it just pulls the whole thing in. Yeah. Mm. No. Sorry, I'm, I like tried to like put the curtains from my backdrop behind me because everything I'm wearing is very dark. I don't know if that helped or not. This is an outfit that I made to go over top of this corset body specifically and it like it fits like it will go on my body without the corset body but it doesn't fit quite right like it definitely pinches more at the waist and it doesn't stay up super well because it doesn't have its own boning like it has two bones in the sides and that's pretty much all that's holding this up with the corset body it would be able to stay up more and like would kind of not sag so much in the center front oh there's also a bone right in the center front but like it's not really holding itself up super well this is a flipper bone and this is what sticks into the corset body so i'll show that as soon as i've got the corset body on but before we switch say hi to baby bat she's like let me down mom i was sleeping Oh. And this is with the corset body. I took my glasses off because the glare was kind of getting to me. But this is what it looks like with the corset body and it's straining much less at the waist. Like this is loose even at the waist, which is better for the costume. Like this means that it's not going to be pulling and straining at the fabric at the seams. So that's a lot better for the costume. Um, just generally like my boobs look like they're in the right place instead of like uh, kind of being hidden by all this flower stuff going on. They're kind of hoisted up, right? Uh, and just generally it fits a lot better. And I feel a lot more secure. Like before I did not feel like this was gonna stay up entirely on its own. So I wanted to show you guys really quick the flipper bones. So they're these little bones on the inside and they're just stitched to the inside of the garment. And they've got just like a little bone in there and what you do with them is you slide them into the top hem of the corset body so those just tuck in like that and they hold the whole garment up so that it doesn't like like flip over the one thing i will say is that it is hard to use the bathroom with all of these layers on uh, because if i want to go use the bathroom i have to take the corset body off to remove my tights i thought about doing it with like a snap closure at the crotch, but that still wouldn't really solve the problem of the tights because the tights do go all the way to the waist and it would be really hard for me to get them like hiked back up there if I did somehow get them down. So uh, this is kind of a like short term costume thing. This is not something that I would wear for like eight hours. I don't really wanna be in a costume for like eight hours at a convention, like three hours now is about my max. So that's, fine with me. This is the gown that I originally made the corset body for. I tried to do it all up on my own, but this is about as far as I can get without any extra help. This is also one of my favorite costumes I've ever made, so I'm just going to show it off for a second. Uh, sparkly. But the corset body, like basically this will stay up on its own, but it doesn't close all the way without the corset body and also like it doesn't stay as like high and lifted like so with the corset body like the boobs are lifted a little bit more and I feel a little bit more secure like when I don't have the corset body on I'm a little concerned that if I breathe in a little bit too deeply it might pop one of the hooks and eyes in the back. This was a lot of labor. I would prefer not to mess anything up on it. And this is with the corset body so it definitely fits a lot better. It's fitting a little bit wrinkly in like where the waist is I think because I've gained some weight since I made this costume so I've got a little bit more uh, volume around my hips just like up here which I think is making it so that the whole this area is getting pushed up so mm, probably won't fix that or do anything about it because I would have to undo some beading to do that and I just 
don't want to. So it's gonna look like that. There's also some beading missing from here because there's a belt that goes with this costume. So it's not like I just forgot to bead there. There's a reason. <laughs> Generally, it fits a lot better, especially in like the upper torso part. There is like the bust fits a lot better and like my bust sits higher while I'm wearing this and it just kind of like lifts the entire thing up. I do have clipper bones in here as well, but it's in kind of a hard to see spot. So I've got one right at the center down here and that one's pretty long. It goes all the way down to here just to really secure that into place. The other two are around here and those hook into the corset body there and they're a bit shorter but you can't see the corset body like at all from just using those flipper bones. It's in there, like it's there, but it's really anchoring this whole silhouette. And you can kind of see it a little bit up here where I need to probably add a couple more flipper bones, which I think I will do before Katsukan if I decide that I'm gonna wear this. All of this mesh here is pretty fragile, so if I was tugging on it a lot, it would probably eventually rip. And I don't really wanna tug on places where there are beads, so this, just helps so that I don't have to feel like I'm tugging everything up constantly. This costume is already like very hard to walk in, uh, like not walk in, it's like I can't move much in this costume. Uh, so the costume itself actually restricts me a lot more than the corset body does because of how these sleeves are. This is as far as I can really lift my arms. The shoes that I have for this also are not the most comfortable. They're very aesthetic. They match the costume really well, but they are not comfortable. The corset body makes it so I do kind of have a time limit on how long I can wear the costumes that I have paired with it because I can only not pee for so long. But these costumes all kind of have a time limit built in anyway. There's only so long I can exist with only being able to lift my arms this much or like with wearing painful shoes. The not being able to go to the bathroom part of wearing this is honestly the least time constraint that I have on these costumes. It's more about what will happen with my comfort actually wearing them. So it's, it's never really been a huge concern. That's it. That's the corset body. I think they're really useful. It was a very cool trick that I learned in school that this is kind of how celebrities keep their garments on and like kind of perfect. Uh, it's not that they're magic or anything. It's just that they have more complex undergarments and more technology working for them. Kind of like the idea of a corselet, which is built into like, if you Google Dior dresses, it's kind of a similar situation, except those are built into each of the dresses. This makes it a really good solution for if you're a cosplayer and you want to be able to use the same undergarment for multiple costumes. Having it as a separate piece is very useful. This kind of undergarment really helps with the convenience of wearing costumes. Like it's so nice to go around the convention and not have to worry about like constantly pulling my clothes up or like being worried that I'm gonna have a wardrobe malfunction and like my top's just gonna flip open or having to build in a corset into every single garment that I make. This really helps to streamline the process of making costumes, wearing costumes, and feeling more secure, physically uh, secured into your costume. I don't want my message to come across as you need to make yourself smaller to have a better cosplay. It's that this will help your garments stay on your body better and keep them consistent in how they look on your body throughout whatever happens with it um, so that you don't have to keep remaking the same costumes over and over. It just helps the longevity of my costumes to be able to use this as a tool. I hope that this video was useful for you. I uh, really needed to make a new one anyway, so I'm glad that this became a good opportunity for that. And if you've got any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. I hope that this was fairly thorough, but if it wasn't, like I always miss stuff. This is not like a full tutorial. I don't really enjoy making full tutorials, so I don't. But hopefully this gave you enough like tips and tricks and the general process enough that this will be helpful for you guys. And then finally, I would like to thank Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is another tool that always helps with pretty much anything that I could possibly be looking to learn. So definitely recommend signing up for Skillshare. And the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go check that out. And that's it. That's the whole video. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Any questions, comments, concerns, questions especially, please throw them at me. I am here to answer. And if you want to see my future videos, uh, maybe someday I'll talk about this costume uh, and like 
the whole process that went into making it because it was a process. <laughs> um, subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.